السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله Indeed, all praise and gratitude are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves. We send salat and salam upon our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah's guidance in every matter. I come to you today on this day of Jumu'ah. From an empty masjid, a masjid devoid of its inhabitants. I come to you on a day when the Muslims of our community will not be establishing the Salatul Jumu'ah as they normally would. This is the significance, and this tells us. The times have changed. The tell, this tells us that we live in unusual times. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed us in a situation, one that we have never experienced before. Within the last few days, many of the masajid in our area have made the very difficult decision to close from all forms of congregation. This was a decision that no Muslim would make lightly. This decision comes with a heavy heart and comes with great regret. But it comes from a place of knowledge and understanding. It comes from a place of wisdom. It comes from the place of Iman and following the sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This decision comes with the interest of the Muslims at heart, safeguarding the health and the well-being of our most vulnerable members of society. This decision comes with the understanding that Islam isn't rigid, Islam isn't harsh, Islam caters to situations and circumstances. This decision is made with the understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed yusr, has placed ease and comfort in his deen. The decision to close the masajid and establish prayer in our homes, it is something which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed us that it could be done at times. When the situation required it, when the difficulty became great, our Prophet ﷺ reminded us that this earth was made a masjid and a place of purification. That anywhere we establish the name of Allah, whether it's two individuals, three individuals, a family, a group of friends, when the name of Allah is mentioned and Allah's name is glorified and salah is established, then that place shines out of the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down upon it. That place, that spot on earth is a masjid. So today, as I come to you from this empty masjid, today many Muslims would experience a very unusual emotion, a very difficult situation when the time for Salatul Jumu'ah will approach and they will not attend the Masajid. Today for the first time many Muslims in years, decades 
would be performing Salat al dhuhr in their homes instead of Salat al jumuah in the Masajid. This is a sign for us. This is a reminder that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in spite of how we feel, Allah is in control of every circumstance and every situation. This is a lesson for us to appreciate the things that we once had, the ease and the facilities available, the, 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 the yusr, the permission from Allah, the, the ease with which we got up and we went to the masajid and we established Salatul Jum'ah, to appreciate those times where Allah made it easy for us, to remember and reflect upon those times where we listen to the khutbah, to remember the days when going to the masjid was just another act, when it was done without thought, without thinking, it became natural. But Allah has placed us in this situation and the believing heart, the believing soul reflects. The believing soul ponders the greatness of Allah in every situation. The believing soul remembers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created this situation. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that He will test us, He will give us reminders, He will send small difficulties so that we can reform ourselves, we can take lesson, we can reflect, we can reform ourselves and turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah will place us in times of trial and difficulty, whether it be loss of life, loss of happiness, loss of wealth, loss of comfort. That Allah will test us. And Allah mentions the reason why He would test us, why He would give us these trials and difficulties so that maybe we will turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us do our part on a spiritual level and on an academic and scientific level, on a community level. Let us be responsible citizens. Let us be Muslims, true to our name, people who submit to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us serve this crisis let us get, get ourselves out of it through our taqwa. Let us prepare for this, let us get out of this difficulty by enhancing our spiritual selves, by developing our spiritual selves and coming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For it is our understanding from the ayats of the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس. That calamities, difficulties, chaos will come upon the earth, and it is directly as a result of the actions that mankind will produce. So our actions as a whole, as humanity as a whole, has brought us to our situation. Let us work to revive our hearts spiritually, to bring our souls closer to Allah so that we can receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we approach and fight an enemy that we cannot see? How do we fight something which we can, be afflict, can, can be afflicting us but we, we, we might not even know? How do we fight something which we might be transmitting to someone else. Of course, within the qadr of Allah, without any knowledge or without any presence of mind as to what is taking place. There is only one answer, there is only one approach to take. And that is to call upon the creator of you and I and the creator of that weapon of, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To call upon the one who placed that creation to test us. 
So this is the time to tackle this crisis from a spiritual level by invoking the blessings of Allah, by calling upon the creator of this very virus, of this very crisis. And from a community level, from a practical level on the ground, by following the instructions of those people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the wisdom and the understanding and the intellect to understand how viruses spread. The people who Allah has given it, given to them the ability to control the spread of viruses. Let us listen to them. Let us be smart and intelligent citizens. Let us be intelligent Muslims. Let us follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and the teachings of Islam. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people who know if you do not know. Let us not act on emotion and only satisfy our desire. Let us not go out thinking that I want to perform the salah in, 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 in the masjid so I will perform the salah or I want to go out so I will go out or I feel healthy so I'm not worried. Let us be concerned Muslims. Let us worry about our fellow brothers and sisters in Islam who are in poor health, who are elderly, who are at greater risk than we might be. Let us not be selfish. Let us remember that when one Muslim suffers, every Muslim should feel the pain. When, when, when one Muslim will be suffering from coronavirus, every Muslim should be concerned as to how we can prevent our Muslim fellow Muslim from becoming afflicted by it. These are the reasons with this understanding. This is why our leaders have taken it upon themselves to make that difficult decision for all of us. That they have sheltered us from carrying that burden. They have taken it upon themselves to make a difficult decision so that we would not be placed in that situation where we can be the cause of someone becoming ill. We can be the means of someone even dying in some cases. Let us not be foolish. Let us be intelligent Muslims. Let us approach this the way the Prophet ﷺ taught us that follow the people who know better. Ask when you do not know. Let us be compassionate to one another. Let us be considerate and let us be kind. Let us be patient above all. And while the buildings are closed, the masajid are closed, let us make our homes the masajid. Let us make our living rooms the seats of knowledge and learning. Let the name of Allah become more prevalent and being mentioned in our homes. Let us spend time reminding ourselves of the sunnah of the Prophet let the activities of the masjid fill the rooms of our homes. It is not a time to turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it is a time to appreciate what we once had. The luxury of attending the masajid, the comfort of being in a place where Allah's name is being mentioned. Now it is upon us as individuals to make our homes these places to gather as many people as we can in our homes, our families, gather our families together and establish salat. If we find ourselves, if we find ourselves going to work, pray with a colleague that is at work. But nothing should be done to jeopardize the safety of our society. Let us follow the advices of our people who are placed in authority over these situations. As they have explained to us that if we establish strict rules of distancing ourselves, if we establish social distancing, then we can flatten the curve. We can reduce the, 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 the rapid nature by which this virus is spreading. 
If we do that, there's rewards for us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being kind and considerate about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our hearts with patience. Let us endure this suffering and this difficulty with wisdom and understanding. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us, to protect us from this, this calamity, to let us weather the storm, to let us get through this difficult period of our lives in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let us perform Salatul Jum'ah very soon in the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To let us return to the masajid on the safe circumstances. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that for whatever mistake we might have committed to bring this difficulty upon ourselves, let us see, let us have the wisdom and the understanding and the insight within ourselves to correct that action. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let this be that point where our society transforms into a more obedient and a more pious society. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to at this moment let our difficulties be a means of the expiation of our sins. أقول قول هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم اللهم أذهب البأس رب الناس واشفي أنت شافي لا شفاء إلا شفاءك شفاء لا يغادر سقم It was a dua of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to ask Allah اللهم أذهب البأس رب الناس O people O master of mankind Remove the ba'as, remove the difficulty, remove the trial. Washfi and shafi, give cure, for you're the one who cures. La shifa illa shifa'uka. O Allah, there is no shifa, there is no cure except the one that you can offer. Shifa la yughadiru saqam. Such a cure after which there remains no illness. Ameen, ameen. I mean, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings. Nas'adullahu al-afiyah. Taqabbalallahu minna. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadu wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin.